Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show number 439. I'm Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitters in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk wrestling as we do every Tuesday night for the last eight years. Hey, it's National Podcasting Day, so celebrate not uh, podcasting. Tell a friend, tell your mother, tell a pet about a podcast and get them to listen. Uh, please, this one, for instance, if they're into this sort of thing. Uh, with me uh, on the line from Pooh Keepsy, New York is Mad Mike at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the tweeters. It's National Podcast Day, Sorg. Yes, I've it's already a- done one. Yep. National Podcast Day. <laughs> That's right. Oh. You do all the podcasts that you physically can. That's what you do on National Podcast Day. That's what I do on Podcast Day every week. Uh, also, with us from um, uh, the, the the deep deep uh, nether regions of Console Energy Center, where they keep the secrets of uh, Sidney Crosby, is Papa Lunchbox. Hi everybody, panelriot.com. Check out Super Ego, uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, Awesome Cast, Boss Battle. Uh, listen to anything on the Earwolf Network. The uh, the Nerdist Network is always good. Ten Minute Podcast is hilarious. NPR generally takes a lot of their shows and uh, puts them up in podcast form. And um, I know I'm forgetting one. You're um, you're you're Panel Riot. Oh, go Panel shut Riot. up. Go Bayside. Oh. Go Bayside, where uh, they watch episodes of um, uh, Saved by the Bell. Great podcast. There you go, go check it out. There you go. Uh, and also from Johnstown, PA, is Bobby F. J. Town, who's very, very close to his camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, things in the mirror are closer than they appear. I'm not a Jurassic Park dinosaur, by the way. Just thought you guys should oh, Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I guess solve a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> guys, hey, please, big, big thanks to our intro outro from Basic Sickness. Check them out more at basicsickness.com for free music and videos. And you can check us out at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. All kinds of fun stuff going on there, including, including the new wrestling game show these guys do on Thursday night on Google Hangout. Um, as well as uh, a little bit, we're going to try to do this regularly. I'm going to try to do some uh, interview flashbacks. Uh, a lot of our great interviews are really kind of buried in iTunes or buried on on other YouTube channels before we moved over to our own. Um, so this week, go check out our, our old interview from uh, Mike Quackenbush from 2010, uh, talking about Chikara and the and the like, and uh, and and pair that up with the Indie Mayhem show last week, where we had a great conversation with uh, Bryce Remsburg. Bryce Remsburg. Uh, you can also check us out, uh, subscribe to us, the Wrestling Mayhem Show or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed or the Sorgatron Media Everything Feed on iTunes, on Stitcher for those two. Uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show regular on uh, YouTube, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, be sure to subscribe, comment, star us. Uh, that really helps other people discover us, actually. Um, and we could really use the comments. Please, please, if you have not yet, it is National Podcast Day. You should go. You know what you do on National podcast day i'm gonna make sure i tweet this out before the end of the day go to all those podcasts that you listen to like all the ones that lb did and lb before you go to bed tonight i want you to put a comment or a star on each one of those things in itunes or wherever done. you might do that done. done do it well, do it except um, for panel right because that's mine and i'm not going to comment that's on a little answer. weird if you do that i, 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 I may have just ready. downloaded five episodes of go base so there you go true. there you go help <laughs> them out it's help out your favorite podcast because you might be the only one listening to it, and you want other people to, so they keep doing awesome things like talking about Saved by the Bell or professional wrestling. Um, also, please uh, let us know what you think at Good Times. Good Times at WrestlingMamShow.com. What the? Whoa. Whoa. That was Whoa. not me as a dinosaur. Oh, okay. Um, and also, uh, our phone number, our, our hotline at 412 206 WMS. WMS0. Okay, uh, you can <laughs> what? also join that, us here live Tuesdays 
at 9 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Dot com. Also support us on the Patreon like you heard at the top of the show. Uh, big thanks to our longtime Patreon supporters. They're there pretty much since the beginning. Our friends at TheWrestlingRevolution.com Go there, check out their community, be part of their community. Great dis- discussions going on there. And of course our friend of the show, Bo Diggity! Woo! Away from the mic. Away from the mic. Um, and then, th- 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 thanks, guys. We really, really appreciate it. I mean, they're putting their money where their mouth is. They're supporting what we're doing here. They dig what we're doing here. So big, huge thanks to them. And you get mentioned here at the top of the show. And uh, with a dollar, you get some awesome stuff like... Um, uh, they also got a fireside chat tonight. A fireside <laughs> chat <laughs> cast. A, a, a The remblings of a, of a coffee... Ki- coffee cast. I can't even do the accent. See, there's a problem with me and accents. I can't redo the accent later. It's all right. Forget about it. I forget about it. Forget about, forget about it. it. Yeah, Rizzle I got to work on that. Dick. Uh, whoa, no, 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 no. Rizzle suck uh, your dick. Mm. Yeah, I mean. Let's start the cast the only way, way we know how, other than the last five minutes, whatever the heck we just did, um, with the fan mail. Random the yellow. fan mail. Um, does anybody else want the Mr. Techwood drive? I can take this. Yes? Yes? Okay. I'm going to call dibs on the next one. Okay. You always do that to me. Uh, to the WMS Nation, I don't believe why TNA... He was actually talking to me, I think, on Twitter or Facebook about this over the last couple of days. Um, TNA is stuck in the Grand ba- Brawl Room in Manhattan Center, but it's getting close to breaking the record for most appearances in a single venue done by WWE Raw back when it just got started. This does not include free pay-per-views. If they keep this up, it may be a permanent home for TNA until a new TV deal is reached. I think we've been talking a little bit about that, but we'll touch on that in a moment. Uh, maybe they should move it back to Orlando or have Los Angeles uh, make their new digs if uh, what the hell make, uh, make out in Los Angeles their new digs if he, if he took over for Dixie Cup he says uh, but we'll take NYC as a battleground why because it's wrestling history hope you break it TNA PRK Mr. Techwood Drive so he's basically like what's up with TNA being in Manhattan Center Ooh, forever yeah. Uh, Mike, What's I think Mike, I think you got some What's inside info on this one, as in you attended I, some of these events. Uh, yeah, they're done at the Manhattan Center. Okay. <laughs> the la- last last week was the last. I'm not even going to call it a set of tapings because the last episode of Impact was literally matches from all three taping days, which is why it was a filler Impact. And you and that's, you've been debating that like there's there was actually some comments and back and forth about it being a filler and you're like no this was actually just a bunch of random matches they had this like was literally filler yeah. like this was literally matches they put at the end of each regular impact taping just to keep the fans there longer so they had more matches that were logged it's like the clip show of professional wrestling yeah yeah okay I'll I'll buy that okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um but so so it's their that was their last taping, right? That was their last taping in New York. As far as I know, um everything from now on until Thanksgiving is gonna be in the, the Pennsylvania tapings. The Bethlehem ones. Yes, so have fun with three months of Bethlehem. <laughs> I wonder how Bethlehem came off. Happy oh, birthday, what? Jesus. And they're pretty much done. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I guess we'll find out at Christmas, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, actually, the last episode, spoiler alert, this huge spoiler is the Christmas episode of Impact. It's just an hour long of them singing carols with a giant manger in the ring and Eric Young is the baby Jesus. Oh, oh, I'm glad he found a spot. Good yeah. for him. Good for the friend of the show. <laughs> uh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that might be better than any episode of Impact they taped. How many? How many weeks did they film? How many? How many weeks have a week to week been at at the uh, Command Center? I know they filmed them all in one bunch, but they. I think they filmed about six shows. Wow! So that does feel like forever. Yeah. What is John the Baptist doing in the Impact Zone? <laughs> <laughs> you just had to say that. Bob, Sorry. Bobby. Bobby, who would your John the Baptist be? Would it would it be EC3? No, it has to be a WWE star that comes. Uh, uh, Drew McIntyre. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Wow, I don't know how to follow that up. Uh, LB, please give me the next uh, uh, email here. Oh, Yoshi Tatsu. <laughs> hey. hey there, 
<laughs> LB, you're disappearing off the camera. <laughs> hey, I'm comfortable. Hey there, Mayhemers. I fell asleep toward the end of Raw again. This is a recurring event. My new Tuesday morning routine usually starts with me checking WWE YouTube channel to see what I missed. I must be getting old. Amen, brother. No, Dean Ambrose no, Ra- no is... Raw is. <laughs> uh, nailed it. Dean Ambrose is fascinating to watch now that WWE is putting its full promotional power behind him. He is being booked as a top face. That means stealing other people's stuff, beating people up for little to no reason, and generally acting like a jerk. He's right. Mm. Fortunately for Dean, he was already doing many of these things. Still, I sense a slightly uncomfortable change in his behavior. If Alberto Del Rio were still around, Dean would almost certainly have stolen his car by now. Anyone else feeling this? Your pal in the mainstream media, Matt, sent from my iPhone. What do you think, LB? I agree. I mm-hmm. he's, he's completely right. They're, WWE's really trying to um, make their faces all likable, edgy. Guys like them, girls like them, and it doesn't work. They just end up coming off as dicks like Sheamus. And uh, Dean, um, Dean comes off as less of a dick because his character is also crazy. Yeah, I think it's more gonna entertaining. work. With, I think it's gonna work with Dean. Yeah, well, I agree. I mean, to be fair, the stuff Sheamus has done. Is it really any different from stuff that Stone Cold did? I mean, it just no. seems like it worked with Stone yeah. Cold, so they do it with other people, but we don't necessarily like the other people as much as we liked Austin, so yeah. it comes off yeah. differently. Like, she- Seamus is so boring. Mm, yeah. He's so boring. And, and Dean... Oh, good. I was going to say, Seamus is at his best when he's beating the fuck out of yeah, somebody yeah. who in is trying to beat him the fuck back. We talked yes. about that last in night. Sorrow, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. In the ring, he's awesome. His character? Mm-hmm. He's an Irish guy. Like, it doesn't extend beyond being he's an Irish bruiser. If, so what, yeah. like, it's hard to add that extra dimension to that, right? If he were a true Irishman. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my God. What happened? Sorry. <laughs> Don't oh worry about it. God. Different shot. We got to set the set back up. You guys carry <laughs> on without happened? me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. What don't worry about don't on. worry about this. Don't worry about, don't worry about it. That was my camera. That was my camera. Okay, we'll fix that. We'll fix that in post. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. May, mayhem show media. bloopers. <laughs> Bobby, you had a point, please. Um if if they were to make Seamus an actual Irishman, they they would they're start they're starting a little by little to go away from the PC thing or the, the PG era thing. Why not have him be a belligerent Kind of drunken guy. <laughs> You're talking. That, that, it's a bully, you know. So, but, but that, Bobby, just a guy who wants to drink and fight, an Irishman. Fucking throw but, potatoes at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Bobby, um, is that, I don't know if is that racist. I don't know if it's racist. I'm sorry. I think it's Rachel. But Seamus is literally the face of the BSR campaign, so I don't yeah. think you can really do that right now. Well, not right now, I know. It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Somebody else but he's texting me, and he's dressing like one of the Highlanders, and... and Give it to Dolph Ziggler, or, or, or somebody like that, that, you know... Somebody, somebody that gets thrown around the ring. <laughs> yeah, but Dolph never got bullied in school. No, he was no, you know who should be the... You know who should be the face of the BSR campaign? Bo Dallas. I can see that. Bo a star. Give it to Santino. I mean, he's not doing anything. Mm. I'm sure Santino was bullied. Why is not? Well, he's also not in the WWE right what? now. I mean, yeah. yeah well, he, that, that, I mean, he could be like the ambassador for that. Okay. That would be a good role for All him. Right. That could be. That could be fun. So, he appeals to the just, kids, you know. Just, just give, give, give. Seamus, um, I think it's I think it's more weight when you have a Seamus saying, "Hey, I'm bullied. Hey, be a star," because he's like, you know, hey, nobody's gonna bully Seamus. No, 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 but but somebody did, right? I mean, oh, how, Yoshi did. That's right. <laughs> but no, like like legit in school or whatever. He wasn't always a giant bruiser dude. He was a skinny pale kid in Irish. Yeah, I guess everybody's skinny pale kid in Ireland. Potatoes. Um, yeah, it really went in over our Irish. <laughs> we <laughs> have lost all of our Irish listeners today. All you know yeah. what? We were we were all, like most of them. we were we were denying the Swedish listeners since like episode fifteen. So I'm yeah. not even worried about this. That's a fair Just point. because we can't tell if they're male or female. This is, that's no, that was Mike. <laughs> that was yeah, Mike, and that was Vim. I still that was feel bad else. about that. 
I'll make it up to everybody by buying something in Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby. That's a deal, but it's got to be furniture. Meatballs don't count. What? Because I'm fat? I buy meatballs? No, the fucking meatballs aren't Swedish. And the meatballs are delicious. So and they're horse meat. Like yeah, they, they heard that. Horse Anyways, meat. moving on. There's a one more horse email. <laughs> Allegedly. There's, there's one more email. Meat is delicious. Uh, LB, do you want this one? No, food. I fucking read the last one. I don't want to oh, read it. I'll read this. I'll okay, read this uh, Mike, I think you can take this one. Okay, best, oh best no, it's a, lot, it's a lot of big words. A lot of um, big words. Dear Wrestling Mayhem Show. And fuck, big words. <laughs> fuck MMA. Love Isaac G. What? There you go. The, I, wow. the, I don't know why that happened. Did we I talk about MMA? I assume he's not a fan of Bobby Lashley. Oh. <laughs> Possibly. Oh. Who is, really? I am. I don't, I don't watch MMA. So I I'm was. Kind of is in, in his camp. I'm not now. Guys, thanks for the emails. Please check us out uh, uh, or hit us up at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com <laughs> so you can be a part of the start of the show and get the discussion rolling. We have interesting Quit discussions. Quit fucking this week. punching your microphone. It, it's like falling. It's, it's, it's just it's, keep hitting. It's it. okay. It's that my life, friend. That, that microphone needs life alert. Cough button, Sork. <laughs> I fall and I can't get up. So uh, we just lost the senior demographic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all right i'll them. get him back to be fair bobby we we're going to lose them eventually anyway oh. i will buy two things from ikea now <laughs> are you over the age of 75 <laughs> looking for love do it out here guys hey <laughs> wrestling mayhem up, rtime.com big ups to our friends <laughs> who do sponsor us have you ever pulled apart it now <laughs> <laughs> Have uh, LB? Obviously, what you're gonna say? Have you ever pulled apart a pizza? Yes. Yeah. It, well, what I was gonna say involved cheese. So, <laughs> um, sure have Sorg. Sure have. And uh, let me tell you, I haven't pulled apart a pizza as good as the ones they have on Slice, Slice on Broadway. <laughs> Slice on Broadway. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. That's where we get our pizza for our in studio guests here on Tuesday nights because we're going oh night. Long on Tuesday nights with the podcast. We we record six of these guys, six I'm buy podcasts a car in a row, just so I can come have that pizza. Exactly, he's buying a car so he can come get this pizza that's sitting that's right there. Bus, just so I can have more slice on Broadway. <laughs> exactly. Even though it's a lot closer for me to get a slice on actual Broadway. But I'm going to come to Pittsburgh to do it because their slice on Broadway is fantastic. It yeah, is, but is. in New York, you got to fight off the Phantom of the Opera, and then the cheese is all cold by the time he's done singing his fucking death song. <laughs> I don't know how Broadway works. <laughs> it's a trap. It's all a trap. It's all a trap. It's all a trap. Uh, but I can tell you it's not a trap to come up here. Broadway and the Beachview <laughs> neighborhood or the Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. I'm going to say that right. Forget about it. All alone with my pizza. <laughs> there you go. Sing it, Bobby. I'm, I'm done. Oh, okay. But there you go. You got a new theme song for SliceOnBroadway.com. Please the check them out. Tell them they have sent you. Or tweet. Or tweet them. Inside, inside your mouth. <laughs> Guys, slice on Broadway. Check them out. Tell, let them know the Mayhem Show you, uh, sent you. Let them know. If you, if you can't get in the neighborhood, let them know you've been hearing about them wherever you are. So you know they know they, you appreciate what they do for us. <laughs> what was that? Um, guys, okay. uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, it is National Podcast Day. National, National Podcast, Podcast Day. Day? They're still doing this? It's a yes. Gag. It's a gag from like two years Sword. ago. Sorg, anytime you say it's a national day, we have to repeat it like we're so surprised by this fact. Oh, February 2nd, National Groundhog Day. National Groundhog Day? It's not what it's called. Sorry, no, it isn't. Worry. No, it isn't. Um, well, it is national. But I, I figured I, I want to have a conversation about podcasting and wrestling in general. Uh, of course, we have kind of several flavors of wrestling podcasting i guess happening right now of course there's the us yeah there's yeah. us you gotta thinking? start on top the cream of the crop the greatest wrestling podcast on the internet no one even else comes close nice tv fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, okay, let's start with that. Like, there's the fan podcast. Anybody can start a podcast, and mm -hmm. we have. Um, 
but you know, there, there's us. There's the brand that we bring to this. There's our opinions, our personalities, and, and and people have seemed to latch on to it over the years. You guys are in the chat room. You guys are talking with us on Twitter. You guys are talking with us on Facebook. Um, so so like, we're doing something right there. Um, people buy t-shirts and stuff from us. You know, I mean, you know, stuff like that. Uh, people uh, um, better fucking buy our t-shirts at fucking Pro Wrestling Tees dot fucking com. Uh, I wouldn't put uh, that last part in there. Are we, are we not doing the... No, no, the, we're not doing that. Oh, that's later in the show. That's later you in the put show. a swear in the middle of the URL. I put a swear wherever I fucking that's, feel like, that, Bobby. That's going to 404 that shit. Um, but, uh, Sorry. you know, but the, we're not the only ones. There's a lot of other fan casts out there. We interact with a lot of them on Twitter, actually. There's the fan podcast. There's uh, Mark and Out. Uh, those guys are awesome uh, to, mm-hmm. to tweet with on Monday nights. And I know you've mentioned some, like, Bobby, there's that one on the Nerdist that you've mentioned. The, what was it? The Wii? Uh, wrestle, wrestle. Uh, wrestle right? compadre slam cast yeah but the one i listen to is uh we watch wrestling podcast. we watch wrestling with matt Mar- matt mccarthy friend of the show he's in our group <laughs> he is so nice I mean, nice I, and, and there's other ones like um um there's that attitude cast uh, like mm-hmm. i can't remember. i think Eamon has been listening to it uh where they're watching um um attitude episodes <laughs> Hell, we do after shows. We do um, the wrestling game show, wrestlinggameshow.com, if you want to check that out. Um, I mean, there's. I a- actually started a Wrestling After Dark podcast. Ooh, oh, have you? Sexy. Yeah, where I just rot wildly speculate on penis size. Oh. <laughs> that sounds did like. Start, did you start with Ahmed Johnson? Because I feel like. You have to start with Ahmed Johnson. I feel like. I feel like I'm surprised you do that. And you haven't attended Denny's after a wrestling show with us. Yes, I have. Oh, you have. So you're aware of the bulge meter. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. What did I just walk into? <laughs> a bulge meter, Bobby. That's right. A bulge meter. Okay. Welcome. Welcome yeah. to the bulge meter cast. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, what else do you guys listen to? And, and what's your kind of take on, on other fan casts? Are we comparing? Are we comparing podcast size here? Are we only, are we, <laughs> are we only talking about fan casts? Yeah. Yeah. At this, at this point. Uh, okay. Other people that are not wrestlers that do podcasts. <laughs> I don't really listen to any other fan casts. No. I listen to a couple others that you haven't mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I listen to um, the podcast from WrestlingAudio.com. Okay. Uh, I've listened to them for years. Uh, one of the, the lead host uh, now works for Wizard World. So he actually gets to do a lot of like uh, interviews with some WWE guys, which is pretty interesting. But they, they have a cleanish show and they do you know reviews of raw and pay-per-views but they don't really touch impact or anything like that but they're fun to listen to uh they have a they have a english guy that does um a bunch of dvd reviews and stuff like that nice and and i also listen to a show called smart wrestling fan which is a really fun show they're totally clean like uh they don't curse or anything like that so they cater to kids but they're still very very funny um Oh, kids catering business. Yeah. Um, nice. Just fucking chicken fingers and french fries. Yeah, and hot dogs. <laughs> and sliders. We have to cut the hot dogs up there. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, hey, you mentioned the British. One I listened to, I, I haven't <laughs> listened to a lot of it, um, but Diva Dirt does a podcast, I believe, and it was, again, a British <laughs> really? guy. Uh, and there's a few interviews I listened to on there, um, and that they were, they're, they were a pretty cool one. And of course, you know, more focused on the female wrestlers, you know. It's really funny, um, less so these days, but I remember uh, they're in my, they're in my, uh, blo- uh, my RSS reader on Feedly. And um, it, it always seemed like... Um, you're watching, you're you're looking through, and all of a sudden you see a post who was on Raw last night, and it's like so and so showed her face, and it's like the most pitiful. Like this mm-hmm. person showed up in a bad back or backstage segment because there really wasn't much going on for divas, right? Mm-hmm. They must be having just a, like we we need any we just love divas, please. please, please can, we, can you can you give us any news on the divas, please? Anything, anything? Like if it didn't have boobs, it's not worthy of their sight. So it's like they have this like chi thing you know um but, but but given attention and not it's not in you know it's a very respectable way of course with the site and everything and they interview a lot of uh, give a lot of attention to like shine and uh uh shimmer uh wrestlers so i mean if you're interested not just in wwe and uh, you know what's coming up in the indies and there's a lot of good wrestlers in the indies uh for women um you know unfortunately not a lot of places where it's happening but there's a lot of them out there that are really awesome um I actually recommend that site in general, but you know, of course, their podcasts as well. Um, Between the ropes, 
I have not listened to them regularly for a while, but they had they were podcasting their radio show and then they went off radio and they started kind of trying to do MMA and stuff too. Uh, <laughs> Brian Fritz is the head over there. Uh, the best is back in the day where they, where they had him. Um, I forget the other guy's name, but I know one of them was a member of the New Heavenly Bodies. So it was like, you know, you got a little bit of insight, right? And for a while, actually, D'Leo Brown was a part of the podcast too. So uh, before he took his stint with uh, uh, TNA, this last stint he's been doing. Um, but yeah, I got back into it with that. And it was it was very interesting, good insight. Um, you know, insiderish a little bit, you know, but but not not like too much, you know. Um, you know, it, it's not okay. It's not like dirt sheety, insidery, sports center, arguey. Um, like, you know, uh, you know, the, the Justin Labar's chair shot uh, reality for once, you know, it's not the conversations I would have, you know, um, but it's great for what it was. It, you know, a lot of people are jumping on that thing. Um, so I don't really count them as a podcast though. They're more of just like a video show that's on a site, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I, I, I don't think they're on iTunes or anything like that. So, uh, what, what guys listen to anything else that we haven't mentioned? Um, well, I, I was, I was going to say about We Watch uh, Wrestling Podcast. They're kind of a different podcast in, in that they, they they talk about like the new the new stuff that's happening a little bit, but they're, they're more fo focused on the older stuff. Um, like just the other day they came out with – where they w went back and watched The Ultimate Warrior, The Rise and Fall of The Ultimate Warrior DVD, and they did a commentary over that, uh, nice. which was really good. I, I recommend checking that out. And um, – they, 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 the, the podcast started with them trying to get their friend Tom into wrestling, and it's now a year later since they started, and it, it, it was like his journey to becoming a wrestling fan. Nice. And they give him homework every week, which he doesn't do a lot of the times. So like, I don't know how many weeks in a row they tried to get him to watch Starcade 83. <laughs> and, and they're like, and Matt McCarthy said, you, you don't watch anything from like 99 b from the past. You know, he wants to watch all the new stuff. So um, it's it's a really cool podcast, and also um, a couple weeks ago I I uh, listened to friend of the show Brandon Stroud on another podcast. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the name escapes me, but it was a guy from England. He was talking to, and they were reviewing the NXT rosters. Don't and they it, do a podcast called The Mandible Claw? Isn't that no? It, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't the Mandible Claw. It was a different. But that's one. another one. I know. I know. Oh, maybe it really was. Big on maybe it was too. Mandible Claw. Maybe it was Mandible Claw. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I remember the logo had like the WCW championship belt on it. Um, but they were reviewing the NXT roster and they actually revealed that uh, Mojo Rawley and um, uh, <laughs> Bull Dempsey were ba giant babies. Um, it was, re it was uh. really funny. It was really uh. funny. So you have to check that one out. Um, if we, if I remember what it is, I'll, I'll let you know. What, what do you guys think about the state of uh, kind of fan podcasting these days? Like, I, I mean, it, it sounds like there's some good stuff out mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, for me, I, you know, it, it, you know, some of these like, you know, they have a good hook. Like I have a problem. Some of the personalities I find on some of the fan podcasts I have trouble with. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like maybe they have like, especially like there's, there's some of them. Um, there's a couple that I, I love talking with on Twitter, you know, um, but I went and listened to their podcast and I'm like, nah, it's not for me. You know, I mean, there's definitely uh, for me, you know, we I, I, I've, I'm very stringent on we have a certain kind of conversation, a certain let's bring the conversation up a little bit. Right. Or, or down, depending on what our mood may be. Right. <laughs> but we have this is the kind of conversation we, we got we have off the show. You know, mm -hmm. this show started with Will and I. LB, kayfabe, um, you know, sitting at a party and everybody else was drinking and carrying on or whatever. And we were talking wrestling yeah. like this. This was, And it wasn't just one. This was like consistently every time we were at a party together, we would talk wrestling mm -hmm. <laughs> and drink Fago and um, it was Moon Mist and Vanilla Vodka. Mm, those were the days. Oh, those were the days. Fantastic stuff happened with that. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Um, but uh, you know, it, 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 you know, and I don't know if it's just the personalities of some of these guys, but you know, I, I love these ones that I'm hearing from you guys with the, with these angles, like like you know, these guys with the missions. You mm -hmm. know, I I love podcasts with a mission. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, um, that's pretty cool. But I mean, it, what what's what gets you into a new podcast? Uh, well, I first started listening to podcasts just by searching just by like 
doing an iTunes search for wrestling. Mm -hmm. But now it's basically talking to you guys and hearing recommendations mm -hmm. from other people. Yeah, are, we're are you talking about just wrestling podcasts or podcasts in general? I'm kind of looking at because I, I want to talk about a different kind of wrestling podcast here in a moment, but I'm more talking about like general, like anybody doing a podcast about wrestling right now. Mm. Word of mouth. I, I still have to recuse myself because I, ha I haven't listened to many. <laughs> I don't. I don't listen to any. I, I do have the the one that Bobby mentioned on the Nerdist Network. The wrestling compadre slam cast i do have it in my downcast feed but i haven't listened to an episode i will warn you they go a little heavy on the soundboard oh <laughs> yes yeah i really like a, little heavy, a little heavy on the booker t a little heavy on the booker t yeah 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 and by a little i mean a lot mm -hmm. they call him every week <laughs> yeah <laughs> just well, if you got i mean honestly if we had access to booker t we would probably call him every week too. Yeah, that's true. That that's true. a fair point. That's a fair point. Now, can you dig that? <laughs> hey, we we so have cool. we have used Jimmy Demarco a lot on this show, to be honest. So, <laughs> right? I mean, he uh, Jimmy Demarco is kind of our Booker T. We should we no? should tweet him that right now. <laughs> we have somebody on tweeters that can do that. It's at IWC Promoter, by the way. Um, <laughs> of course, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> oh, I love Jimmy DeMarco. <laughs> um, oh, good. Sting's going to NXT. What? Yes, okay. of course he is. Sure, sure. Anyways, uh, so let's talk about the other side of it. Of course, this is a phenomenon. I think we can blame Colt Cabana. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. totally. Um, Colt Cabana is the first, and I still think the best at this. He was on Raw last night. He was? No, he is. No, yeah, he his giant, giant head. head. <laughs> In the that, was a, that was a Scotty Goldman head, Bobby. There it oh. is. Um, but no, Colt Cabana started Art of Wrestling. It was kind of his next step after he left WWE. And he's like, okay, what's next? Um, it was kind of part of him building his brand. And he's had, like, what, over almost 200 episodes? Over 200 episodes of it? of tremendous conversations over the years with wrestlers and, and not just indie wrestlers, former WWS, former TNA guys, current WWE and TNA guys. I don't know how he's getting that access. Eh, he's Cole Cabana, of course. Um, but, you know, great conversations, you know, not interviews, conversations. And, uh, you know, kind of the truest, um, you know, I, I, I like I like podcasts that are uh oh natural like like yo know, bobby you know listening to nerdist they're having conversations and this is mm -hmm. the nerdist podcast of wrestling i think mm -hmm. um you know I'd agree with that. what's that i'd agree with that um and it really appeals to me now we're getting into this world and and this one i i can say i blame cole cabana for starting the trend but i really blame kind of podcast one um, oh, goodness, for yeah. perpetuating the bad side of this trend. Of course, we got uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin started a podcast, and uh, it was brutal to begin with. Um, but they have great interviews, mm -hmm. um, or at least conversations with other guys in the industry that catch your attention. Hey, let's listen to Stone Cold just kind of BSing with uh, Kevin Nash for two hours. Sure. Um, and, and now we've had that kind of grow. Where we have uh, Jim Ross, we have Chris Jericho. Um, who else has got one? Oh, DD, is DDP's on podcast one? Uh, I don't think so, but He's we have Goldberg, you have Roddy Piper. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Goldberg has a podcast? Yeah, yeah. It's mostly oh, yeah. about cars. Okay, yep. okay. <laughs> no, okay. Actually, you know what? I, okay, because I felt like a sameness across Jericho, JR, and. Um, uh, Stone Cold, because it was all just them interviewing their buddies for a long time. And now I did see there. I, I think I was looking at Jericho's today, and there's there's some other people in there. Like, I, like Kevin Smith was on one. Um, yeah. and I'm kind of curious what what kind of conversation that is. And I, and I, they're, they're, I really uh, sore. Don't listen to that one until you've seen Tusk. I really think Kevin Smith will appear on any podcast. We need yeah. to get him on this show. That would be amazing. True, true. <laughs> or any one of our shows. I he, he will just fucking show up anywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah but really anywhere like, New York like, on. I'll, like, I'll there's ask a difference him. between I ask him i mean chloroform him <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference between showing up on chris hardwick's pet podcast and us i'm sure um but no I, you know what he was on chris hardwick's podcast he was on getting dug with high he was on goal like any fucking wrestling podcast he is everywhere that's true that's true 
uh, part of the marketing an machine. Need, when it comes you know to what? We, what we need I'm is a sure PR. If we said we've been doing this for eight or nine years, he'll be like, "Well, I'm fucking on board." <laughs> I want to turn you boys into walruses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways um, walrus mayhem show but you guys have listened to, you guys have obviously listened to a few of these podcasts what do you think about this this uh trend of the the wrestler podcast uh, uh situation here i, I I'll, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on the podcast one once in a moment but i don't know what, what do you guys think they need to cut down the intros mm-hmm. yes i buy skip, a whole lot i buy skip through well, let's be honest we're looking for the interview right Yep. Yeah. Unless I'm really into Chris Jericho, and I like Chris Jericho. He's my favorite wrestler of all time. But I don't want to listen to him talking about yes. Motley Crue for ten minutes. Me either. Everybody. Although I have to say, oh I have to say, if he did an entire podcast where his daughters reviewed uh, children's books, I'd listen to that because that was adorable. Oh, That's real creepy. Oh. <laughs> but I tend- no, no, no. Oh, I yes, to listen to it. It was adorable. I'm not going to because it's real creepy. <laughs> well, he put it out there. It's not my fault. Still real creepy. <laughs> it's not, I don't think that's how that works. Um, I skipped through about 20 minutes of stuff on Jericho's podcast. Thank you, 15 second button on the podcast app. Um, before getting to the Triple H interview I was looking for. And I believe at a certain point, he did an ad for underwear. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Underwear. Uh, yep. This is where it's kind of detaching because they're doing these horrible radio ads. Because the thing with podcast one is. They're selling these masses of commercials for their entire network. And, of course, they got big names to do podcasts. They're going to attract big numbers, right? Um, so it's like the lowest common denominator. It's like the thing you hate about radio in podcasting, mm-hmm. you know. And at least Jericho doesn't do a radio voice for his ads. Mm-hmm. He just does it in his normal tone of voice. Jim Ross and Stone Cold's radio voices. <laughs> oh my God, they're the worst fucking things I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like rough. listening to both those men speak, but God damn, if they're pushing product on me, they have the worst voices for radio. Neither are the greatest pitchmen. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, Jr. In the context, which of... is ironic because they've been selling us the attitude error for years. <laughs> I can sell you attitude. I can't sell you um, penis pills. Sh- sh- shaving uh, razors. Razors. Yeah, well, yeah, everybody's yeah. doing the razors on podcasts now. My God, my razor's broken in half. I need to go to Dollar Shave Club and get a new one. See, if he See, did that, that would be perfect. If he did that, it'd be great. It's like, you yeah. know, uh, work with what works, you know? I have I- a better JR than JR right now. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are, Bobby. Wow. wow. You know, it, they should take a cue from. Kevin Smith and the way he does his ads on like the smart ca- on the smartcast network because they just talk about it like mm-hmm. in stream of conversation and they make it funny and they make it feel like it's not an ad even though it's an ad mm-hmm. Audible. like it yeah like it's a little bit more natural and it doesn't break up the flow of the conversation yeah, and, and I listen to some tech podcasts that are kind of similar to that. Although you're like, oh my God, do I really need to hear about how awesome Squarespace is yet again? I've heard about it for five years and I and I run at least three Squarespace sites. I By think the way, I get Sorg, it. Sorg, hmm. Slice on Broadway is delicious. <laughs> Sliceonbroadway.com slash WTF. Uh, <laughs> what? I understood that reference. <laughs> Santa. Okay. Um, <laughs> but see, that's the way you do an ad. It is. It is. Like, it and more... I believe in that too. Like that natural ad, you know, the way I, I hope we pull off here when we've, you know, done this stuff for Slice. We do, you know, what we were selling, trying to sell flashlights and Audible ads and stuff back in the day. Uh, <laughs> so I was super when damn was persuasive <laughs> when I was selling flashlights. <laughs> so we're, we missed the boat on that because now there's a flashlight attachment for your ipad uh there was i have a, I have a so legit long. question can i get one of those at ikea a mm. flashlight <laughs> yeah Ooh, well not, not in the front <laughs> <laughs> oh i gotta go to bed bath and beyond <laughs> way beyond to the, to the beyond section yeah yeah, mm. yeah it's, it's right by housewares yeah. wow. House, housewares housewares right next to the clock radio that you hang in your shower they said housewares uh john juggalo john in the chat room says yeah but uh sometimes kevin rambles on and on 
to to the point to forget what was what is an ad. <laughs> That's, that's a point. Again? That's a good point. And I, I've heard some Audible ads go on for like 10 minutes because they'll start talking about the book that they heard on Audible, which that, is actually informative when they do the that. Is that. The weed doesn't help. Like, yeah. Hey, have you ever done a podcast ad on oh, weed? weed? I haven't. No, I haven't. I, I yeah. just want to make that clear. I have not done that. Guys. <laughs> no, 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 I have not. No. Liar. Fucking no. liar. Oh, no. No, no. No, no, no. Sork just gives relationship advice. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, they, uh, no, no, we're not talking about that. Hey, hold on a second. Um, uh, so podcasting, National Podcast Day. Hey, check out more National Podcast Day. <laughs> National Podcast Day something 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 dot com. <laughs> National Groundhog Day. Um, no, drop in there if you like, because hey, hey, the whole thing is anybody can podcast. You know, any fans can podcast. Even you're not digging on me, you know, but you know, you can find the people. You know, even though, and, and I, I know I'm saying like I'm not into some of these fan casts. Uh, they don't, their personalities don't hit me with anything. They, they do with somebody, right? One thing about us, like our cast, our show is not for everybody. Our show is not for a lot of people. Let's be mm-hmm. honest. Um, but I think we get a lot of people that apparently think we're funny. Um, like it probably means you guys, or at least think it's funny that we think we're funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Love the watch us laugh at laugh at us laughing at ourselves. Um, but you know they're all finding their audience in whatever way. You know uh, the biggest podcast I maybe don't get. You know, uh, but the point is like anybody can start one. You know, if it, Kurt Bronner can buy a Microsoft Zoom mm-hmm. and start a podcast about walking around and getting lost. You can start a podcast. There's a yep. podcast I listen to uh, occasionally called Brunchburg, where they just have a conversation having brunch at a cafe. Oh, that sounds fancy. It is fancy. Go check it out. Brunchburg.com. It's pretty fantastic. The thunder is happening. Wow, guys. Whoa. Yeah, it's been lightning in here for quite a while. I'm in a basement, so I'm not seeing that. So, But if it gets dark real quick and I lose you, we know why. Let's go to a break, speaking of. Uh, but no, you know, if anybody in our audience started a podcast, well, I'll support the shit out of that, okay? Um, whether it's wrestling or otherwise, you know? Um, and I think that's one thing that's important, too. Um, because I think, you know, we just sat on our podcast about wrestling, talking about other podcasts about wrestling. Um, the show, hey, it's not, you know, just like we kind of want to show, hey, it's not just this wrestling going on. Um, there's a lot of conversations happening, and I think it's important to get a, a lot of different opinions, you know. I do that with the tech podcasts, and I run a tech podcast. You know, I, you know, video games, we do a video game podcast. You guys listen to video game podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. No, what? Yes. yes? Yeah, exactly. I'm not a video game podcast. What's that? I host a video game podcast. Well, you host but he listens to himself apparently, so that counts. Um, I don't have a Microsoft Zoom though. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? Who does? I don't even have an iPod. Kurt Brown has. <laughs> oh, I do have an iPod actually. So, anyways, um, anyway, so you know, just kind of want to support, talk about podcasting on this grandest of days, uh, and cool to see that uh, podcasting is still getting some great, great attention, uh, guys. Go check us out. We got some great stuff going on over at uh, sorgatronmedia.com slash store. If you go over there um, or hit that button on the side over at sorgatronmedia.com for the DVD, DVD and digital download store, you don't have to get a DVD shipped to you and it takes a couple days and I got to go make it and put it in an envelope and all that kind of stuff. But if that's the way you want it, we can do that. I have no problem with that. But we have uh, uh, some great stuff from uh, uh, guys from the area and beyond uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. They're having a star from uh, the big three promotions showing up the next three shows. Uh, they just had a big uh, ECW uh, brand show with, with uh, Sabu crazy stuff. That's going to be up uh, uh, shortly on digital download. Um, you can check out the great AJ styles, the missing matches just saw him have a tremendous, they, they tore down the house AJ styles and Matt Seidel over the weekend with ring of honor and wheeling West Virginia. Uh, this is a 40 minute interview with him. Uh, two discs set uh, about four hours, four or five hours of stuff uh, with the interview plus matches uh, from throughout his career. I think as early as at least 2003, I think we have on there an early match of him with CM Punk of all people. Uh, one of the early super indie stuff from one PW. Uh, also a great refereeing one one the finding Zach Gowan documentary. We did um, uh, great stuff from the international wrestling cartel, including the, the latest Saturday night fights that you can pick up on digital for five 99, or you can pick up matches for 99 cents each last few uh, IWC shows. You can buy individual matches. So if you want to see, 
Um, I can't remember a big match, the big cage match from uh, Cage Fury last month. You can get that for two bucks, uh, for instance. Or uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance just had BJ Whitmer on the last show from Ring of Honor. Matt Hardy a m- two months ago. Um, they're going to have big shows coming up here with uh, uh, Shane Helms and Chanjay Dutt are going to be a part of that. A lot of really cool things happening with all those promotions. Plus, we just released last week. A uh, DVD set, Prime Cuts, in conjunction with our friend Joe Dombrowski, uh, joe-dombrowski.com. Uh, some of the greatest matches. Again, another two of this set if you get it on DVD or a digital download. It's a, a big four-hour affair. Um, and uh, the best of him taking on guys like Johnny Gargano. Uh, you can go check that out. It's uh, uh, as low as fourteen ninety nine over there as well. Uh, so uh, go, let's uh, hop over to uh, uh, a preview of uh, uh macross uh prime cuts uh for you guys on video and uh we'll be right back with remember when he is one of the most unique stars in wrestling a gymnastics and parkour master who can perform feats of athleticism not possible by any other man in the industry full press oh beautiful no other man in this industry can do a maneuver like that his talents have taken him to 20 different countries, but some of M Dog Matt Cross's most breathtaking moments have taken place right here at home. Spear! Now available on DVD and digital download, four hours of Matt's best matches and moments in Prime Cut, Aerial Insanity. You'll see every match in its entirety as Cross clashes with lifelong friend turned rival Josh Prohibition. The end dog with a counter. Reverse Hurricane Rana. Josh Prohibition on his head. Shooting star. We need a referee. We need a referee. Very tall in the ring. Cover three. End dog did it. An out of control, no disqualification war that spills all over the building with Johnny Gargano. A lost cause at this point. M Dog 20, Matt Cross. Matt Cross doing. He is climbing. Oh, it drops down. He is climbing the rope. That helps to hold up this entire building. Plus, things go full circle as Cross, Prohibition, and Gargano meet in a three way dance. Show yourself. Ain't a damn thing boring about this. Space flying M Dog drive. And in what many called a dream match, the first and only one-on-one meeting ever between M Dog Matt Cross and the master of the Canadian destroyer Petey Williams. You know what's coming next? What's that? Oh no! What? Time for hey. to sing O Canada. No! Ah! M Dog drops Petey. Petey likes to sing O Canada and do the low blow it. Shooting star coming up. Uh-oh! Got it! Cover! This is gonna do it! No! From his first major championship in his hometown to proving the critics who said he wasn't tough enough wrong, you'll see every important step to how Matt Cross became king of the Cleveland streets. You can do nothing but watch the incoming. Oh my god! And check out Cross! Cross putting on the line! Look out! Shoot it! No! Dear Lord! M Dog Matt Cross, Aerial Insanity. Available now on DVD and digital download. This is the Aaron Sheik. You listen to the Mayhem Show. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. USA, ah, top. And we're back. And again, please check out uh, SorgatronMedia.com slash store for that and all kinds of awesome wrestlingness. Wrestling awesomeness? Yeah. Oof. What, you okay? Good. No, I'm good. You are right? Sure? Yeah, okay. my balls itch real bad. Whoa. Well, uh, get them, get the, the uh, itch out because Lucky it's time off screen. 
for remember. <laughs> it's time for remember when. <laughs> Do you remember one song this week really you scratching your balls? <laughs> oh, cat <laughs> Okay, on that point. Remember uh, when? <laughs> <laughs> this week on Remember When, uh, I thought we'd look back. Best backstage cameos, of course, inspired by uh, Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury, of all people. Um, the New Stooges. Who, the New Stooges. They got to be the New Stooges. I hope this keeps going. Um, I think they're going to find new life as the New Stooges. Hopefully that means they'll wrestle again, too, maybe in some entertaining uh, matches. Hopefully. Joey Mercury needs to get hair. He has a huge noggin. I don't, I don't think Jamie Noble is going to wrestle again. Jamie Noble is oh, going to right. stay as far away from Seamus. Seamus put it out. Seamus yeah. put it out. Put him out, man. Um, uh, joining us again on the panel, of course, uh, the Riz at the E Riz. Uh, oh, so nice to be here. Matt Carlin's at Mainstream Matt. Uh, Hot oh, Wheels at Hot Wheels RWA. And did anybody else speak uh, in there that I missed? I don't think so. Um, and of course, our cast from the first half. Uh, so, so uh, who wants to go first? Who's got a I got it. Me, me, me. Oh, ooh, ooh, damn it. Ooh. Oh, Riz got one. Riz got one. It's also really um, close to the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the hundredth episode of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Fuck you! Was, Fuck you! <laughs> was the greatest it was a thousand. of my life. One of the a thousand, thousand? That's the yeah. thousandth show. Whatever. There's a one God in there, and a lot of zeros. But the one to me that was so symbolic was the grown-up hand of May Young and Mark yep. Henry. A hundred percent. Fuck you. <laughs> Mine wasn't taken yet. That was my backup. Yeah, it, 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 I'm sorry I took it, but what else? Like that was the perfect thing to have happen. Like I remember us talking about what we wanted to see for our. Like I think this was a remember when back to what we wanted to see. Uh, but my 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 one was. What if they bring back the hand? And they brought back the hand. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, Lunchbox. It's okay. I can't even be mad. You're right. I am right. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Say it again. Say it again. You. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Bobby. Before yours gets taken, let's get you out um, of the way first. Mine is kind of a cameo. Not really. Um, you remember when... Uh, Abraham Washington was recruiting people. God damn it! <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? <laughs> Fucking shit. Go to town, Bobby. I, when Abraham Washington was recruiting people, um, he was supposed to recruit Mason Ryan. No. And Mason Ryan walked up and was totally ignored. He was basically background material. So that's my cameo. Mason Ryan in his last WWE appearance Aww. ever. <laughs> Aww. He was He was shunned. Man, Mike, what about you? Oh God! All right, thank you, thank you, Bobby, for not taking mine. Um, I'm gonna say WrestleMania 20. Um, it, it there was a backstage segment where I believe Jonathan Coachman was looking for the Undertaker because uh, they're very scared that the Undertaker was going to be back in black, as it were. And um, they found Mean Gene Okerlund and Bobby Heenan in a backstage. God damn closet. it! <laughs> 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 and, and they're both making out with uh, Mae Young Whoa. and the fabulous Mula. Oh, yes. And um, <laughs> it was probably the last time we saw Bobby Heenan in full faculties on WWE TV. So yeah, Bobby Heenan. LB do. LB, do you need LB, do, do you no, have another no. one? I want to see if this streak's going to keep going. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we want to see if your next one gets taken. What, be, what about you, Matt Carlin? Do you have one? Go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Um, mine is probably... God less- damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Mine might be... Um, it, it, it's less of a cameo and more of an introduction, but I recall the um, there was a backstage interview segment many years ago with um, Booker T. Booker T is just doing a typical interview, 
and Eric Bischoff just strolls in for oh, the first yeah. time on WWE <laughs> TV and just shakes his hand. And Booker T's got the most big eyed, like, you know, tell me. Damn it. I did not see that exactly. <laughs> and then Eric went out there and hugged Vince. It was an awesome, like, just hmm. out of nowhere. Awesome. Oh, what about you, Wheels? Heck. Matt Collins took mine. Oh, no. For reals? <laughs> For reals. For reals. For reals. Uh, <laughs> For reals. Uh, okay, LB, LB, any, what, do you, what do you got? Oh, uh, uh, Beaker. Beaker the Muppet. Having a <laughs> oh. Talking about how he's not going to make it to the family reunion, and then Seamus just starts playing with his hair. It's very strange. And I, and I want to give a, a, a special mention to my uh, my cousin who uh, used to write for WWE and would like work his way into the shots sometimes. Nice. Oh. Into the show. Yes. And, yeah, we interviewed her. That's another one. I, I should bring that one up next week. Uh, Wheels, did you get one back? No. I'm still working on mine, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to go first? Uh, you know what? Mine is uh, uh, Dutters and crew getting uh, in the background in the crowd for a rumble this year. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, their mayhem tweeter sign. So mm. how about that? How about them? That wasn't, that wasn't backstage. No, it wasn't backstage. No, no that wasn't, that wasn't backstage. We weren't backstage. That was, we weren't, we weren't backstage. Oh, backstage. how about, um, remember when Michael Tarver used to just hang out yeah! backstage on his phone? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone thought he was like setting up a new Nexus or something like that. But in actuality, he was, he was literally calling the unemployment agency because he was going to be fired soon. He <laughs> was the backstage guy. He was the backstage cameo for a month or yeah. two. <laughs> there was a, oh, um, the, the night, um, I, I, I only recall this because I just watched this uh, episode of Raw a little bit ago. The night when um, Austin and McMahon had their first match together on Raw, they have a camera shot where they follow Vince, you know, through the backstage up to the curtain where he's going to walk out. And the previous segment was this very intense segment with like Dan Severn and Owen Hart and Ken Shamrock, all these guys in there. And as Vince is going towards the curtain, Owen Hart is casually walking back from the curtain, <laughs> just passing each other as Vince is going up into the. And um, <laughs> I'm going to stop out. you right there. Uh, nothing Dan Severn ever did in WWE was <laughs> intense. Just <laughs> bring it out there. I, it might have been. It might have been someone him. else. Besides just, his awesome mustache. It, it might have been Steve Blackman. <laughs> I just thought of another one, but I'll wait till the other guys go. Wheels? Okay, I think I got one. In Blue uh, Salute to the Troops 2, I remember the wonderful backstage segments and cameos of the reporter Gregory Helms <laughs> looking for <laughs> the hurricane. Yeah. I enjoyed that very, very much, and listening to back and forth interview segment of them doing it together. I'm like, that was cool. So there, there is mine. Ace for honorable mention. As I, I was was shown off. Where did I see this? Oh, it was on Countdown. I think this week, and I hadn't seen this when it originally happened. When uh, uh, Triple H called out uh, Renee for doing her interviews in her bare feet and they they <laughs> shot down to her feet uh, <laughs> it was he was doing some evolution stuff like earlier this year and he's like why do you always do these in your bare feet and then like she just like stops because she doesn't know what to do next and they pan down <laughs> to her feet and look at her she's like i i i don't know i just do <laughs> so. i think she does it to make the wrestlers look taller yeah. that was my thought too like i bet she has heels and stuff and and let's make sure she's not creeping up on them right yeah. yeah, but yeah, but the, but the time Roman told her to take off her shoes in the ring the one time that got weird. Uh, yeah. Oh, he had a Tony Atlas moment. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting weird. And also honorable Every time mention Roman to says anything's a little weird. Also honorable mention to uh, Matt Carlin's hanging with Stephanie McMahon backstage. Yeah. yeah, if if you um if you feel inclined to go and watch it again on KDK.com, you will catch a clip of me trailing Stephanie as we do the walk walkie shot through the backstage is pretty funny. Nice. I got another honorable, honorable mention. Okay. Um, when when uh, somebody said about Vince walking backstage, uh, do you guys remember when Paul Paul London just smiled at Vince? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Him and, <laughs> that him was the and, night um, that he blew up. 
in the limit. Him and what's his, his, his fuck? <laughs> Uh, Brian uh, Kendrick. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Kendrick, no, didn't, Kendrick didn't smile. No, it was just Paul London. Only London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody was normal, and then it was just like, there he is, Yay. big smile. No, no, it was both of them because they were a tag team at the time. Yeah, no, but it was just, they, only, they were, yeah, they were there. Everybody the smiled. No, Paul London was the only one who smiled. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, you know, I'm ashamed of all of us for not mentioning honorable mention of poor Stan. Stan the oh, intern. Oh, I just kicked Stan. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't what know if I have. When, uh, what about when uh, Stasiak would just come barreling through the uh, backstage? Oh, no. oh, no. I'm trying to get out of this one. Drop, name drop, Stasiak, man. No Stasiak. Oh no. <laughs> All right. While we let uh, out, LB, outlines watch is about to explode. While we let <laughs> LB uh, simmer down a little bit, and I am going to tweet the uh, the uh, Stephanie McMahon KDKA stuff on the uh, Twitter account momentarily. Um, hey, Mike, can you tell us about some T-shirts we might have for the people? Some what? I couldn't hear you over LB's drive. So, some T-shirts? t-shirts. Oh, well, if you go to uh, prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS, we have many, many four shirts available. that are very, very comfortable. I, If you watch this past week's Impact from New York City and actually knew what you were looking for, you could see me wearing my property of WMS t-shirt on Impact. But uh, we also have a Good Times t-shirt, Good times. And, and we have a uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show logo there. But also, you can go to Pro Wrestling Tees, and you can find t-shirts for all of your favorite indie wrestlers, and even current tag team champion Goldust. Mm-hmm. There, there, uh, uh, Jim Ross has shirts there. A lot of wrestlers have shirts there. A lot of friends of the show have shirts there. They're very fun, they're very comfortable, and they may help you get laid. I don't guarantee that, though. Especially if you grab up the uh, Uncle Filthy shirt that I just rolled up on. <laughs> um, I guess he's a wrestler. <laughs> Uncle Filthy. Uncle, Uncle Filthy. Filthy. There are also Andre the Giant shirts there, apparently. Mm-hmm. And there's also and Macho I, Man. I believe Ethan Carter has shirts there now, too. <sighs> yes, he does. Your he does. friend your friend on Twitter, Mad Mike, Ethan Carter. He is. Uh, I, I almost want to get the EC FN3 shirt that he has because that's just fantastic. There's also a shirt of him hugging Rockstar Spud from behind with a bold base word that says friendship. Nice. Nice. So go check it out. Support the show. Support indie wrestling. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS to get started. Uh, so let's talk about... Guys, it was a good Raw last night for one thing. Yeah, like uh, good raw. I, I I was very entertained by SmackDown. I know uh, you guys were talking about uh, we talked last night that, that uh, the Big Show Rusev match was fantastic. Yeah, for instance, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently main main event was doing some great stuff. Um, you know, I I good week for WWE when it felt <laughs> weird. Yeah, I was I was just about to say the only thing we haven't covered is TNA, and we all know how that feels. Um. Hey, hey, Sorg, Sorg. Yeah, I, I think we need to talk about this because TNA non-spoiler released... related. It's no, just... not I will not. We're not spoiling anything. I'm not going to spoil anything. But um, TNA released the, the uh, match listings for Bound for Glory. Okay. Um, and, and are you telling me there's an issue with these match listings on? For yeah, Bound for Glory? there's a lot of issues. Okay. Uh, to, to explain. Yeah. Explain the problem. Well, all right. Uh, you have an, a three-way match for the X Division Championship: Loki versus Kaz Hayashi versus Samoa Joe. Okay. Now that there doesn't seem like there'd be an issue with that, but um, Samoa Joe may be injured, so he may not even make Bound for Glory, which would be problematic. He's not bound for Bound for Glory. That is true. Points. Um, yes. Uh, the main event. I guess is going to be the great Muda and Tajiri versus James Storm and the great Sonata. I want Tajiri, but I want WWE Tajiri. Everybody oh. wants WWE Tajiri. I, I prefer ECW Tajiri myself. Oh yeah, that's true. Either either one of those. <laughs> but I mean, 
James, like, the only story they're actually building for Bound for Glory is this story with James Storm and Muda. But because everything has already been filmed, uh, you can't really build it except with video packages. And that's pretty much the gist for all the rest of these matches. Because even though Team 3D is getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, they're having a match against Abyss and Tommy Dreamer for reasons. Um, uh, a wrestling exhibition. Yeah. Sorg, uh, Sorg. Besides the exhibition match, there is there are no championship matches at Bound for Glory. Now, did, have, you read up, have you read up on the reason there's no championship yeah. matches? So, yeah, the, uh, uh, apparently, um, in Japan, there is a huge issue if you have a live event or f- t- live tape event, whatever it is, and you have pre-tapes, and you've already changed titles, as there's been a lot of swapping that's going to be coming up here in, in the in these. Uh, I mean, we we have the rest of the year basically getting that got taped. Stuff's going to happen, right? And it's not going to happen at the show. And since they've already taped those title changes, they won't let Japan. I'm not saying Japan won't let them, but if they did, it would be a very bad idea. Like they will probably be booed out of the building. It, so, uh, who's who's the current champion uh, on TV for Impact? Is it Bobby, Bobby Lashley? Bobby Lashley. Bobby, 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 Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Um, uh, well, you know, more or less, Bobby Lashley does not have the belt anymore. Um, as of maybe November when that when it finally airs, right? I don't. I don't even think he's coming to the show. Yeah, I I thought Bobby Lashley had a scheduling conflict. <laughs> Okay, uh, but, but but for instance, or or, or or there's a tag team champion that that doesn't have it, or or, or whatnot. There, even though they've taped the show for like say November, where like the tag teams titles swap, they're not mm-hmm. going to let them come out with the belts at the pay per view. Well, so sorry, there's also an inherent problem with that. The um, at Bound for Glory, the tag team champions are currently not a tag team. Yeah, yeah, that's also that's also an issue. You know, but again, this just goes back to maybe they didn't think that think through this whole having a pay per view thing in Japan because that's not even going to be live. Wow, it's TNA. No, wait, wait, it's not going to be live, or is it going to be like like not live as in with twenty four hours? It's going to air here. It's within twenty because if there if it was live, it would have to be like nine a.m. Exactly. Okay, so as far as that goes, I understand that. I get that. There's yeah. a reason. I mean, I, I don't expect it to be at two in the morning, you know, or whatever it is. Um, I, I think that makes sense. Unfortunately, this is the internet age. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. that works. That works in the pay per view world, but maybe not today no, in the real doesn't. world. No, no, no. It, it doesn't it, work in the. That's why you'll never see a WrestleMania in England. Okay. Do you think Vince will ever do a WrestleMania in England? I don't. They'd have to. Either film it really early in England so you could air it regular time on the network, mm-hmm. or they'd have to air it on a tape delay, and they're never going to air WrestleMania on a tape delay, which Bound for Glory is essentially TNA's WrestleMania. Right. And right, they yeah. don't even have a world title match on it. They don't have a tag title match on it. They don't even have a knockouts title match And, and on they've it. really changed what Bound for Glory is by putting it on Japan. And it, it's just like a, this is almost, it, this is almost like a, one of their one night stand pay-per-views in Japan. Except it's not because they're charging 50 bucks for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, are, how is the build to this been as far as, you know, Horrible. check out this. How, there I, hasn't been one. Okay. Horrible. The only, like I said, the only thing that they've built is the Tajiri and Muda versus Storm and Sonata. And, and this, that's just more James Storm because they haven't mentioned Muda and Tajiri facing them. And, and this is like, less than two weeks away? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. This, this is this is for Mad Mike. Um, have they even announced that – have you heard that this was two weeks away? Or were you looking it up? Because honestly – after everything that I've seen on TNA, and I, I I I missed last week's for better reasons, as I pointed out on the uh, on the after show. By the way, you can check out on on the super feed. Uh, but it just seemed like I missed absolutely nothing. 
there were a few weeks where they were not airing the Bound for Glory promo because I think they were legitimately wondering if they were going to be able to have it. Mm. I, I think they were legitimately concerned about that. There were not ads for it for a couple weeks, and then they decided to bring it, bring the ads back because they realized, oh yeah, this is in October. We kind of need to start pushing this. Mm-hmm. But again, it it, go, it goes to show you um, if I threw a, a surprise birthday party for one of you, <gasps> for somebody here, for me. Okay, Bobby. If I if I threw a surprise birthday party for you, uh huh, I'm listening. A month before I throw that surprise birthday party, I tell you that there's gonna be cake at your birthday party. Can it be a Kurt Angle Ferrari cake? No, no. <laughs> Listen to me. It can be any cake you want, Bobby. <laughs> Kurt Angle Ferrari. If, if I, it, it can be the Kurt Angle Ferrari. Cake. Yes. But if I told you that, <laughs> if I would were to tell you that in advance of your surprise birthday party, okay. Wait, why then would I would say me? then I would say I would give you whatever present you want, like say, oh, I don't uh, know, a great Kali action figure, like uh, life size. Oh, life size. Okay, life size. If I, I want to. <laughs> Can I have a if I said that, no. If I, I said a that, action figure riding in a, a convertible Ferrari. If I would were to say I'm going to give you this present, okay. Would you be excited for your birthday party? Yeah, for Kurt Angle Ferrari. If I, yeah, if I yeah, told, that's that's kind of a bad example. I'm pretty sure we're yeah, off the rails on the example, but I love seeing yeah. them try. I'm, I'm just. My, I, just, I, just I thought it was early. good, but I just like hearing stories. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It's, actually, it's just like it, it, they're telling you one thing is going to happen at this pay per view, but then <laughs> on the other side, they're going. They're not. They're they're but not. See, the thing is, because everything on, changes after the pay per view on TV. They're not telling us anything that's happening. No, I'm hungry for cake. <laughs> nothing's happening. We've watched it for three months, not three weeks. Nothing has happened. And right. It seems like that the they're building. Is, they the have the show. Content for the show. Shut up, Eamon. The they, problem they, they is, spent all this time building. The, the, uh, this TNA spent all this time building this stability in their roster. They they built up Lashley. They gave the X Division title to Samoa Joe. They built him up. They gave him these nice long title reigns. And right when they're about to go to the pay per view, they shuffle the deck again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's the biggest issue. It seems like they're building to a whole lot of different things, yet none of them are going to be happening on the pay per view. It seems like they're building to a Lashley versus Rude rematch. It, it, it really like they're building toward the final match in the uh, Wolves versus Team 3D versus Hardy's match, which mm-hmm. theoretically could be at Bound for Glory. And, uh, and, and they're I'll, building up the James Storm thing, which actually is happening at Bound for Glory. And, and they, they're, they're building up stuff that needs to happen because, like, in some cases, some of the title switches that have happened before the end of the year are for people, making sure the titles are on people that don't have contracts through the beginning of the year when they would return. To be fair, they don't even know if they're going to return at the beginning of the year. In the long run. Yes. Um, I mean, there's been reports that uh, such and such has talked to Dixie and they feel better about the situation. So I'll, whatever I'll that believe, means. I'll believe that when I hear it. I'll believe when there's an announcement. They, and we're going to have TV still. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's they have through the end of the year and it's one of those like I'll believe when there's an announcement and guys, there's like three months left. Yeah, but sort they've already filmed. They've already filmed. Yes, they've they've already filmed through the end of the year. But there's no I guarantee. Don't, I after don't that. think they've filmed enough for the end of the year, though. So the, like I've heard, the, I've heard rumors that they're going to be doing best of specials. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised because why they put start in, doing that? Yeah, that that's a death knell. That's a uh, death yeah. knell. No, that's that's fulfilling a uh, requirement. And that's a death knell. I'm sorry if they if on like unless it's a holiday. And I don't even know if I'd give them that. Unless mm-hmm. it's like on Christmas or on Thanksgiving. Or National Podcast start, Day. National Podcast Day. <laughs> but the second they start doing clip shows of TNA, they're done. 
they're done. They, they're barely holding on to the ratings they have to begin with. If you literally have a TNA that's all reruns, yeah. they may as well at this point talk to Vince McMahon and say, hey, can you produce us for the network? Because I honestly think I – w- I joked about that when the network first came on. I think that would be a hell of an idea. Hmm. Because you could run it out of Florida – you could run it out of full sale. It's it's a win win for TNA. It's a win win for WWE. You could have a TNA versus NXT feud. Ooh. You could have Ethan Carter go back to NXT where he was ostracized and try to dominate that motherfucker. Like, I heard I heard if, if TNA folds, that's the only one they're interested in. Is Ethan oh, Carter? Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's not surprising at all. Because mm-hmm. look at the rest of the roster. They're either old WWE wrestlers or they're way past their prime. Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah, I cannot see Joe, Bobby Roode, James Storm um, uh, thriving at any capacity. Yeah, if at these this guys point. were going to be in WWE, they would have been in there years ago. Yeah, I can see them bringing the bromans in, actually. Probably, but... I can see that because the bromans are an interesting combo. And hopefully that could means... them in with Zack Ryder and they could be a fun... And, I mean, I would want that only so maybe like Zima gets in there. You know, I was just going to say we'll get to see Shima. Yeah. So. I've always wanted to see a stable with the Miz and Jesse Goddard just because <laughs> with the reality TV connection. Oh, I actually really like that. Me too. <laughs> awesome. yeah, that'd, be, that'd be really great. <laughs> well, guys, uh, other than talking the death knell of TNA, which I'm sure we'll be talking about a great deal over the next three months. Um, <laughs> unless something comes around, and then we'll talk Death about Nail. why is that Death a bad Nail thing? Is an awesome heavy metal band, by the way. <laughs> Death Nail of TNA. <laughs> we are the Death Nail. Death Nail of, of TNA. TNA is my suicidal tendencies cover band. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now I present you the Ballad of Bobby Roode. And now I present you, uh, guys. Let me know what you learned from wrestling this week, uh, Bobby. You got one. Oh, me first. <laughs> Mike, you got one? Oh. Um, I learned that Rosa um, has committed sexual harassment against Paige. Oh. Yeah, that was sexual it. harassment. <laughs> sexual harassment. Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How about you, way, LB? Mike Allen, title. Title. Sexual harassment. No, I can't put that. LB, no. why not? Why not, Sorg? <laughs> LB, what'd you learn? Please take me out of this. Like oh man, dream. you picked the wrong one. I can't think of anything. Oh jeez. Come back to me. Um, um, I'm running out, Bobby. You got something back? I um, brought back the cruiserweight division. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you, Dean Ambrose. <laughs> I got one. Um, Dean, I learned that Dean Ambrose is still a wizard. Mm-hmm. And no, uh, from the moon, Bobby. There was a back door. No, he's still a wizard because he made things magically appear in Seth's briefcase. Is he from the moon? He is. It's an electric razor. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, continuing the backstage segment that I love recently, these threads a little bit. Um, what about you, Riz? Oh. I also learned that Luke Harper is the worst person to play peekaboo with. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the worst I, person. I learned that Big Show is an actual magician. Oh? Because oh, when, yeah. when he took down that flag, whose face was there? Chris Benoit. Oh, no. Big Show is full. Uh, he's the suit from Full Metal Alchemist. And there is there is video <laughs> proof of this, he and they keep on Benoit. showing it over and over again. Oh no, I've not gotten that to the blur. What about you, Matt Carlins? Um, geez, oh man, I learned so much. Um, but I I think the most important thing I learned is that the blood feud between Heath Slater and Los <laughs> Matadores will not die ever. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Blood and fur will be shed. And that even though Drew and Jinder are gone, um, Hornswoggle and Heath and Titus O'Neil have formed a new 3MB. Oh, and they no. will feud with Los Matadores for all the times. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, 
Jesse Jackson's going to be the D'Lo Brown of that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. What about you, Wheels? Oh, and I, I learned that Slater Gator oh. has an awesome theme song. Too. They do now. They do now. Great tune. Wheels? All right. What did I learn? I've learned that as many times as you turn off Raw and you go back to it, somehow you still end up getting a diva segment. Because <laughs> we switched between the Pens game and Raw, and I swear to God, every time we came back, there was a new diva segment. I went, a lot of women's wrestling. This is cool. And then you saw the women's wrestling and was like, okay. And I went, I'm maybe. going back to the Pens game. <laughs> Just one segment, though. Oh, I also think Tyson Kidd was playing super card. Yeah, Tyson Ooh. Kidd. We didn't talk about Tyson Kidd, ignoring the match that was going on in front of him. Oh, I did not get a chance <laughs> to see that. Greatest. That was oh. Natty insisting that he watch it. And he's just like, "Why? I don't have any. No, I don't want this match. Natty There's is the no worst. reason. Natty is like the worst high school teacher. Natty's trying <laughs> to make a three way happen, guys. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Grandma wow. Natty. <laughs> wow, uh, Eamon, Hey, you showed up at some point here. Did you learn anything I, from wrestling? I did. It was going to be the Tyson Kid gives zero fucks. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I guess it could be the Tyson Kid gives zero fucks. That's fine. <laughs> Fact. Yeah. Yes, he does. Gives none. <laughs> All right. Um, and I learned this Over. weekend. Did you t- I was going to say, did you tell us what you learned? Did I learn something this weekend, guys? Did I learn something this weekend? Did I learn I something you this did. weekend? I don't know. Yeah, so um, did you learn that the titty master knows how to do booby traps? Oh. I learned that we've we've harkened back. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, Nickelodeon, or I'm, I'm sorry, WWE turned it on Nickelodeon's uh, You Can't Do That on Television last night. Yes. <laughs> and Seth Rollins doesn't know. What? Yes. He also didn't know how to wash it off by just saying water. No, apparently not. He had that in the his 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 beard the rest of the night. You don't know what they used. They could have done like a, they, they could have had like a really horrible concoction. I think I think that um, it was yellow like the, the mustard on Jamie Noble's face. So I think Jamie Noble might have eaten the hot dog with like that green stuff. On. <laughs> it was the same what? color when, when Seth Rollins wiped it off. It was yellow like on Seth's face. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. It looked like the mustard. No, oh, it was green. I saw it green. No, but yeah, it was, it was green. after afterwards though, when he wiped it off, his face yeah, it was, was yellow. Green. Yeah, green. Um, Agree to disagree. Yeah. Also, yeah. I'm surprised nobody said this. Bo Dallas is our American hero that we deserve. <laughs> Poor yeah, Bo Dallas. Okay. Yeah, oh. I, I feel bad for Steph because when he was back there with. Triple H and Kane and Randy. Randy and all of them were just dying laughing at this. And you could see, I could see the little bubbles top of Triple H's head going, that kind of reminds me of a DX color there. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I had anything to do with this. <laughs> it does seem a little okay. DXy, although it didn't, it didn't involve poop. So, guys. Uh, please, uh, if you want to uh, tell us what you learned this week, you can hit us up on uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, on Google Plus, and the great Facebook group where we have a lot of discussion going on. You can hit us up at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can see all the stuff, uh, classic interviews, uh, the wrestling game show, the wrap ups for uh, NXT, TNA, and uh, WWE Raw. Hey, you know, Thursdays will get a lot lighter if uh, things go south there for that stuff we're talking mm-hmm. about with Impact. You know what that means? What does that longer mean? Longer game shows. Longer game shows. No, I don't think we need longer ones. Oh, God, also, no. please drop us along with your thoughts at that email address. <laughs> Good times at Wrestling Man Show. <laughs> oh, hey, I almost Time. missed this. Uh, you know, you can join us here live every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sugartronmedia.com and you can participate just like, hey, our guest coming up for the Indie Mayhem shows in the chat room, Michael McCormick of the great Tales from the Indies podcast, speaking of National Podcasting Day. Give him a plug there. National Podcasting, Podcasting Day. Day. Podcast Day. I was late, sorry. <sighs> okay. Oh, um, but uh, he says, uh, as far as what he learned this week, um, he thinks Natty is being forced to be fake. I hope so because yeah, I hope this isn't really her. She's, just she's not very awful. endearing uh, on on anything right now. 
Uh, like big things, space sickness, space sickness.com for that music before and after show. Check out uh, free tracks, videos, and more. Support somebody that supports us and our other sponsors as well. And you can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Uh, please subscribe to us, like us, uh, thumbs down us, really, if it was a bad episode. Let no. Us know. No, I mean, no, no, let's be honest that. here. I just, want, I just want some feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make, make, thumbs down like make bobby or, cry um on any of that like. stuff but, but 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 no seriously if you comment um like i said podcast day challenge um like po- comment whatever podcast you listen to you should do it on a regular basis anyways um just do a sweep of everything you listen to right there um and uh with that uh thanks guys have a great week mayhem show out just wait just wait just wait just wait just wait wait for the perfect time to attack don't give up what you want take it back wait for the perfect this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com